years. A low percentage of kids actually finish school and graduate, but Nolfke did that all on his own and graduated first in his class. We have helped him sell some art and assist him, but he has worked for his own education this year and empowered him to do that. Well, when we got to the place that we asked Nolfke, now what do you want to do? He looked and he, he said, you know, survive and make it. Now, what do you want to do, Nolfke? And he said, I've always wanted to study medicine. Well, because he put himself through school and graduated first in his class, he, we see him studying. He has tutored our kids. He has been a great example in self-discipline. We said, well, well, awesome. Well, great. Sat down with his daddy, who's a deacon at a church down the street from us. A good family, although we know he's a rest of it, and we've walked with him in that. And he said, I love being at the house of Moses because y'all love me unconditionally. Y'all don't shame me on the nights that y'all allow me to eat here, and I get to eat without feeling, um, you know, and I'm going to be real honest with you. His half-brothers and sisters, they go to the same school as Tara, and his seventh grade little sister, Tara says, has a reputation of being one of the stinkiest, kind of snottiest girls in the school. And I believe it because Nolfke says, you know, I'll get ready to go eat after I made sure that everybody else has eaten. And I'm still going to have to do all the dishes. And he'll go up there and she'll say, I may not be done yet. And just really shame him for getting his, his food. And that is just a reality of how we live. But he's on a good spectrum because as we talk to his daddy about his future, he said, we let him go to school and he graduated. We are so proud of him and we've done our part and I don't have the money to send him to further education, but you have to understand that even if I did have the money to do so, I could not use that on Nofke. He is not seen anymore within our culture. And so you can only encourage and teach and say, but that is not the kingdom culture. And as Christians, we're, we're to live by the kingdom culture. But what, through prayer and, and provision, we have committed to do as a house of Moses and what we are about and empowering and leadership and discipleship, Nolfke will be going this fall to medical school in the Dominican Republic. We found a great medical school there. It's, a, it's assisted with other funds, but it is $4,500 for one year, including living and food, books, and lodging from medical school. We couldn't find that in the United States, could we? So we um, are blessed beyond measure, and we are about $500 from finishing his tuition for medical school in the first year, um, but just blessed beyond measure for our second graduate. And to let y'all know a little bit more about restivism and how y'all can pray as we um, live out the kingdom, but justice in the third world country so you can have a Christian worldview, there's a wide spectrum. Obviously, if it's the step-parent, step-child mentality, um, you may or may not be able to go to school. We would look at it as abuse, um, but a lot of times that's not an abuse, but it can go on a pendulum swing to very abusive situations, especially if it's a neighbor that parents gave them up. Um, anywhere from physical to sexual abuse happens, and you are the child slave of the home, but you're supposed to be thankful because you have some sort of a home and, and food. So you can still pray for Haiti in that way. Many, many people all across the island have rest of it's, And it's a wide spectrum of how those children are treated and um, just a form of injustice in our country. This is Johnny. As John said, Johnny has been leader, Haitian leadership in the House of Moses since we began. He is absolute joy and he has been discipled for the last three years under John. And this fall, him and his new wife will open the second House of Moses, Haitian nationally ran, and they believe they can parent six kids with kingdom excellence. Um, they're looking for a home as, as we speak, and he has already started interviewing kids that are about to age out of their orphanages so that they too can finish high school and be um, raised and modeled and, um, in a Christian home and a marriage and a family. And I'll say this, I think Brian has heard us say this before, but... When we started the House of Moses by faith and believing that this is what God wanted us to do, um, leadership and discipleship can be done through a program. We have mentor programs, after school programs, but living in a home as a family, as a Christian family, has made the difference in the life of orphans. Because being raised in an institution, our kids came from an orphanage. There's 139 kids and two caregivers over them. That at its best is organized chaos. Um, there's no way to give appropriate nurturing, discipline, 
um, accountability um, to that type of situation. So coming into our home, we say things like, no one's feeling sorry for you. That label of poor Haitian orphan, you leave that at the door because there's no orphans in our house. Everybody has a family and everybody's loved and that doesn't define who you are. We say things like that, but I have seen that the restoration and the direct redemption that has happened through discipleship and leadership has been because they finally have a home and a family. And it has re- um, passion and strengthened us that God gave us the institute of the family to raise up a generation of children to impact their culture and society and community for Christ. So Johnny is about to do that. Pray for that second home and for Johnny opening. It's very exciting for us because it's more fruits of discipleship. And John just love this, loves this quote um, by Billy Graham. Salvation is free, but discipleship costs everything we have. It is a sacrificial outpour to share your life transparently in community. But I believe that's what God called us to in Acts 2 when he called the church to be the church. Not religious tradition, but to be a community of believers, to pray with one another, to help one another. I've heard the Gunthers testify that you've done that for them through their accident and bringing meals. They've already just told us what, how, what an encouragement y'all been as the body of Christ. And continue to do that and be that. Because as John said, they'll see it out there. And that's what we're doing in Haiti. That's our family. I think we have a family picture. Do we, we not? Don't, we don't. Oh, that's a different. Oh, well, we had a whole family picture on, on one of them. But thank you for listening. And uh, we need your prayers. We are headed back for another year in Haiti. Another year away from biological family here. Though we're returning to our Jesus family there. And we're just so encouraged about what God is doing. And this was the best and the hardest year in Haiti. But we are believing that going back for this fourth year, um, it's going to be the best year yet. Because now we are the longest and most consistent thing that our kids have had in our life. And that can only um, be more healing and more trust. So thank you. Okay, any questions before I know that you're ready probably to go, but any questions about Haiti or about our mission or all that? Look at that. Really? How, how are you funded? How are we funded? Um, we're funded by, uh, you know, several ways. People can sponsor the students, um, send a monthly donations for the students, and we encourage not only the monetary gift, but for you to be inter interacting with them through, through Facebook, if you have Facebook, or emails, because we want you in their life, too. So there's funding that goes towards, you know, you can sponsor a student, or you just give a donation to the house monthly. Those are huge. Um, so, of course, monetary donation, prayer is huge. Um, always praying for us, um, because we are on 24-7. Um, so can you imagine having that many people in your house. Um, we'll be going up to bed at, late at night and, and there'll be a student come up and go, Mom! Mom! And it's not Jordan or Ava, our 7-year-old, or our 13-year-old, it's one of the 20-year-olds. And so, um, it's just, that's happening all the time. So, prayer is very important to sustain our life, our marriage, um, parenting our kids here. This is Tara. Tara, stand up. <laughs> This is Tara. Turn around. Turn around. That's good. <laughs> Hi. Yes. So that as well. A mission um, trips. Mission trip. That's what I'm about to say. We offer mission trips to the House of Moses, and so you get to see this, um, you know, right up close and personal. Uh, so, and we look at engaging you in your strength in Haiti, finding things that you're good at here, and allow you to do it there in Haiti, but also get to see the House of Moses. Um, as it plays out day to day. <laughs> we have one student who doesn't have a yes, sponsor. Yes, we do have one student that doesn't have a sponsor right now. Moslin does not have a sponsor. His sponsor had to drop out because she had knee surgery. Um, so, um, and issues with that. So, they're no longer able to sponsor. So, I want to go ahead and put his name out there if God so leads you. Um, what else? Any other questions? So, the governor over give you any trouble? Um, adopted no, and, and we don't really, we're not adopting them because they're over the age of 17. They'd be your in Haiti, you can't adopt after yeah, 14. Yeah, you can't adopt after 14 in Haiti, but 17 year old, being what happens is before they age out, 18 or 17, 
when they're out on the streets, it's just like an adult. So they're seen as adults. So the government, they don't care. The government's not engaged at all. Haiti is a very broken country and probably will be until Jesus comes back, full of corruption. So again, that's why we feel that the House of Moses is so pertinent to the, these lives of, of these kids that we're working with and will continue to work with. And because, you know, we didn't talk about this in discipleship. The reason we're sitting here is because those 11 guided, right? <laughs> you're fruit of Peter. You're fruit of James. And, and that's lived out in your life today. So we know discipleship works. So um, the government really doesn't care. Any questions over here from the young group? No yawning. <laughs> I feel bad. Which, on the end of that, too, there's just no accountability, even for ministries and missions. And I'll say that on the negative end. Sometimes you wish they cared more. Right. Because they don't care on a spectrum. This year we... Uh, fostered a four-year-old for nine months because her orphanage was closed for human trafficking and it was America and American missions that discovered this and the Haitian government almost does not care until another country advocate will come yes. in and speak for them many of our kids were were abused in different ways within their orphanage and mission and ministry so unfortunately we we actually wished the government mm -hmm. cared More a little more and Absolutely. was held more accountability to how kids are being cared for and treated within the country. Any other questions? Yes, sir. How was the uh, area you were located in affected by the earthquake? It wasn't uh, affected so much as the only thing probably was uh, a, a large amount of people moved up there temporarily. Um, it, you, you guys saw what happened, of course, after you know, um, Katrina and stuff in this area. So you can imagine a country that has no infrastructure, what that looks like when you have this tons of money come in from other countries and enter a country like Haiti that has no, no way of, of using those funds in a way, plus you add corruption and no accountability. Um, it's, it's very sad to see what happens. Um, there are, I'll speak on the, the, the earthquake, there are some houses being um, built around the Port-au-Prince area, people being moved to different areas, but for the most part, the tent cities still are there and probably will be forever. How does a country recover? Cholera. You know, and cholera. Cholera is another big thing that happened in the Northwest because the, the water table shifted which um, caused the water to become um, infected with cholera. And so what happens is, really, if you get someone to the hospital in time in Haiti, they're able to put fluids in you. But what the, 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 the Haitians don't know this, so they end up drinking this infected water again and again and again because they're dehydrated, and they, they eventually die from dehydration. So that was a big area. Of, uh, that, was a, uh, that was one problem from the effect of the earthquake. More questions? Any other, any other? All right, well, thank you for your time. I know I went a little bit over. Uh, Christy did, I didn't. Uh, so <laughs> thank you for your time and just the love that we've already felt from you guys, yeah. truly.